interpreted. Your destination for travel news and ideas. RM World Travel. Sunday morning, starting at 5 on Super Talk 1270 and the free Super Talk 1270 mobile app. It's time for Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Big Boy. Just get in line, it moves fast. Dakota Pharmacy and Dakota Natural Health Center. We're here to help you stay well. Trademark Realty, Peak Automotive and Service, and Silver Ranch. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bakken. Uh, good Friday morning. Uh, busy show today. Also, Tom Briggle joining us from Bismarck Bobcats. Uh, we're going to wade in right there. Also, Rick Becker. We're going to find out about uh, maybe property taxes going away in North Dakota, that initiated measure. We'll get the details on that coming up, and we'll talk with Runnings coming up next hour as well. This is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Good morning, Tom. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. I, uh, I'm really doing great. It's going to be a fun weekend, and I'm curious to see how our boys stack up against Minot. It's going to be... Uh, Minot's been playing extremely well lately. <laughs> Dodge. Yeah. I think they've lost six or eight games all year long. The good news is two of them are against us. And so it's just going to be really interesting. Everyone's really intrigued. Uh, you know, our coaches, their coaches, the fans, they... Myself, uh, yourself, I, it's going to be a really interesting three game set for sure. Well, of course, uh, three back to back against any team is uh, a little interesting, especially when it's one of your rivals. So, uh, usually by that third game, it gets a little testy and that's going to be the New Year's Eve game. Uh, but, uh, of course, hockey coming up, uh, Friday night, Saturday night, New Year's Eve. Of course, that's uh, going to be the big one. You always do that game. Fireworks after that hockey game. Um, where are you at on tickets? Cause that one always sells out every year. Well, I just dropped you a text. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and I don't know if you make it, but if if you can, you better let me know. I think. Well, we uh, have this other little event going on on New well, Year's. You know, I, I've yeah, got that New Year's Eve yeah. gala thing that I've been doing since I was the mayor, and uh, you yeah. know, we dole out, which you're kind enough to help out with. You guys auction off a jersey and comes back to the you charity do. because we give away uh, fifty to sixty thousand dollars every year for uh, arts and humanities yeah. in, in the community. And uh, thank you, Tom, for being a big part of that, helping yeah. out with your jersey auction on New Year's Eve as well. Um, actually, some special jerseys you've done in the past too so thank you very much yeah. for that but uh um we wendy and i will get to a game very soon it's just won't be right, New Year's we'll Eve. soon but it's probably it might be just as well honestly because you might not be able to sit together i think we have <laughs> that uh, might the, be okay with her so fans, though, i think we have 12 i think we have 12 seats left total wow and, uh, all right new year's eve friday get and, on that and so it's 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 virtually sold out and you know we usually every Every New Year's Eve, people that have been to the game. It's such a it's such a party. It just is, and so we usually have about a hundred uh, standing room only tickets. We put out a notice so that people know that it's sold out. But we do have about a hundred standing room tickets, and they can uh, they can text the Bobcat hotline. Brad has got the hotline, and I'll throw it out just now. People won't remember it, but it's on our Facebook page. It's three nine zero seven four two two. If you do want to. Uh, have a cold one with us and watch some great hockey, and you don't mind, uh, you know, hoofing it for the game. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, anyways, that's the the business side. We have new jerseys again, special jerseys. Along, we'll touch on that, and then we'll talk hockey. But so, Brad's whipped out some nice uh, jerseys again. We always try to have a theme, and this year we're going to be commemorating. And I don't know that it's a done deal. I, as you know, I don't live there, but you know, some people are trying to save the railroad bridge. But nonetheless. We're not making a political statement, but we have a really nice jersey that has uh, the railroad uh, bridge on there. Well, and, that, that and that'll be a great cool. that'll and, be a great uh, so we'll commemorative. Be those off, and they're very cool. That'll be a great commemorative jersey when the bridge does go down because uh, they're building the new mm-hmm. one. So that will be a great remembrance of the bridge. So looking forward to seeing what that jersey looks like. Yeah, it's it's very cool, and I hope they build the bridge fast. If it if it does change over, then we'll have it on next year's. <laughs> yeah, you can have the new one on next year's. Uh, so why uh, not? Uh, you know, the other thing is just to get to get the promo out of the way. So the first five hundred get uh, 
I don't know what the heck to call them. I think we're calling them lasers. That's a little bit of an overstatement, <laughs> but they are uh, first 500 to get some lights to, to shine before the game and, and memory fireworks always puts fireworks. It's just, it's going to be a blast. And, but well, well, mem- memory fireworks. So we can talk hockey. Mem- memory <laughs> fireworks is busy on New Year's Eve because they do the fireworks show after the Bobcats game. And then they come over and do our fireworks show, uh, for the community for the city of Bismarck. Uh, everybody's invited over to the Bismarck Event Center because they've got the fireworks display there, uh, that takes place in the mm-hmm. Southeast mm-hmm. parking lot, uh, in downtown Bismarck. So memory fireworks very, very busy on New Year's Eve. They are, and, you know, they do a great job on, on all of them. Ours is on the first, people always say, where's yours? Ours is on the, on the first fairway, which I've never been on personally because I'm always to the left. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but they put those fireworks out on that first fairway. I've heard it's level. And uh, it's funny, see, because we get emails and texts and Facebook messages from the neighbors asking what time they start because they're, they're setting up a barbecue <laughs> in their backyard and uh, to get ready for the fireworks. So it's um, yeah, they do a great job, and it's fun to see them. i got to tell you, I'm sure the ones for the city might even be bigger than ours, but I'm impressed, like, honestly, with uh, the show they put together for us. It's, on, it's, it's nice. Well, let's talk a little hockey before we hit the break here because we're up against a break. Uh, so what are we looking at with Minot? You mentioned uh, they've, they've been hot all year, uh, but the Bobcats till now have had their numbers, so hopefully that continues. Yeah, the two games we've had against them, uh, you know, we beat them, but they were both really bizarre games. I think one, we, we beat them in overtime in their barn, and then one was uh, Thanksgiving Eve, and we beat them 6-5. to five. I mean, who? There aren't six to five scores very often in our league. It was it was another bizarre game, but the two teams are so uh, I don't know if they're evenly matched or not. But every time they just a rivalry, regardless if one team's better than the other, just the rivalry factor uh, seems to step up the game. But you know these three will be interesting. <clears throat> They've been really sound defensively. Their goaltender I think gives up like one point five and they're like a ninety four. And so that's pretty darn good. And our goaltending is solid, too. Um, but, you know, particularly our forwards would be the interesting to our forwards. We really uh, we like our D, too, don't get me wrong, but this forward crew that we've been talking about there is fun to watch and is as explosive as, um, you know, any that we've had since since the COVID year. And, um yeah, it's been great. And tell me when to hit the, the block. But we also we've run into some injuries. Uh, young Miller's out for the year with an ACL, and Rellers, um, we don't know his status with a broken wrist or what's going on with his wrist. So we brought in a couple new players again. We, we made a trade for a, a big strapping lad. He's six foot three, two fifteen, and uh, can skate you know well for a big guy. But he also brings some physicality, which. And he's got 86 penalty minutes, and um, yeah, he's a big kid, and he's, he's strong, and he's in all three, and he wants to win. So we're glad to have him. The, the fans will see him this weekend too. Perfect, and uh, of course, Minot is always a good game because Bismarck Bobcat fans travel. So let's pack their barn, and then uh, yeah. coming back for New Year's and Eve. A and bring a damn and br- cowbell. Bring the cowbells, yes. And then coming yeah. back for New Year's Eve, you still have a very limited number of those standing room tickets available for the New Year's Eve game. We we do, but it, they'll be gone right after this show. You have Call a good now. thing. After last week's show, it wasn't mm, five minutes after the show. You have a good following out state. I think we got ticket orders from Solon. Uh, I can't remember the little town up by Beulah. <laughs> so, and, and it's no coincidence. It was it was in three minutes I hang up and boom, 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 because we see every sale in our email, right? All right, there's about 12 said, tickets well, left, so call now or go on the app. Download the app if you haven't done that. Uh, BismarckBobcats.com is all things Bobcats. Tom, best of luck and Happy New Year, my friend. Yeah, Happy New Year to you and, uh, and to all your listeners and, and our fans, for sure. Take care. 
Home of the Bismarck Bobcats, Super Talk 1270. and catch all the games here. They start at 735 up in Minot this weekend. And then, of course, uh, the game 715 here in our barn at the VFW on New Year's Eve. Fireworks following that. Uh, don't forget about the fireworks downtown Bismarck after that at midnight as well uh, with Capital City Christmas. This is Talk at the Town on Super Talk 1270. Super Talk. D. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bakken along with Rick Becker. Don't forget uh, Bismarck Bobcats, home of the Bobcats. 735 game time up in Minot this weekend with the Bobcats tonight and tomorrow night. And then, of course, New Year's Eve, uh, 715 game time at the VFW. Fireworks uh, following that as well. And then don't forget about the fireworks for the community-wide. Uh, of course, Capital City Christmas. Uh, putting those on downtown at the Bismarck Event Center. Those are going to be at midnight on New Year's Eve. So lots to do. Get the family out there. The weather's been absolutely beautiful. Speaking of fireworks, um, we're going to have some fireworks coming up this next legislative session, I have a feeling, because of an initiated measure that is uh, uh, being circulated. Dr. Rick Becker, former representative, uh, joining us on the program. Rick, it's been a while. Thanks for coming. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me, Steve. Uh, so back up, of course, uh, you're kind of the face of an initiated measure to get rid of property taxes here in North Dakota. Um, it's been a little while since we talked, so why don't you give a little backstory of that? Because this goes back to 2012, really, and back when you were in the legislature. And um, there's always been the argument of property tax relief versus property tax reform. And I think the taxpayers have been craving, wanting, requesting, asking for some sort of reform and yes. what they've gotten is relief in the forms of some crumbs here and there. Uh, my contention always was it's like, well, if, if you have the ability to give relief, then you're taxing too much in the first place. So just <laughs> exactly. that, that's part of it in my mindset is, oh, so you're giving me my money back. Right. So I'm giving you too much money and then you're going to give me that back and go, hey, hey we gave you something. Here, here's a little relief that doesn't work in my brain. Yep. Yeah, it, it, you're right. It goes back to 2012 when there was the initiated measure to eliminate property tax. And uh, it lost out big time. The voters voted it down. But they did so in large part for, for two reasons. One, there was a big scare campaign, uh, a lot of lot of misrepresentations and, and a lot of money behind that fear campaign. And a lot of promises. And, and secondly, the promises uh, and reassurance to the citizens of North Dakota that, look, this this isn't the right way to go. Trust us. We are going to give you the relief and the reform you've been asking for. Just just let us handle it. And then now in the ensuing 12 years, what we have are uh, so you said, for instance, they they have given relief. They have, but they've done it in a way that has failed miserably. They will say that, <clears throat> excuse me, that they have um, um, paid down 40 percent of our property taxes. Well, I, my property taxes haven't gone down 40 percent. I don't know about no, you. Because other political subs, they babble up anything that. Uh... Right. So if you're going to do relief, you have to have reform with it. Mm -hmm. Many bills over these last several years have been brought forward to the legislature to reform property, the property tax system. And they've been voted down time and time and time again. The legislature refuses to provide real relief and real reform. And so that brings us to where we're at now. So they've had 12 years. They've failed us. It hasn't worked. And so now there's another citizen-led initiated measure to eliminate property taxes. This measure is different. It's better uh, than 2012. The, the, the issues that actually existed with that measure have been addressed. Um, and so this measure provides real tax relief. Every citizen, whatever they're paying in 2025, whatever the, is, is levied in 2024 then, they will get to keep that much money in their pocket year after year after year. Now, that is huge relief. Now, the reason it's going to work is because there's also real reform. Because everything above that level, the, the cities and counties will continue to be able to raise, but they cannot do it based on a valuation. It's called ad valorem, based on a valuation type of property tax. They can raise other uh, fees and taxes. Uh, they can apply it to property owners. They can apply it to wherever. They can raise sales tax, whatever they need to do. But it's only for that increased amount that they'll need down the down the road. And so that's where we get reform. That's where we, we retain control. Bismarck, 
uh, has nothing to do with the local cities and counties' budgets. They have no say in anything. What we are doing is forcing the legislature to provide the relief by saying, look, you're going to take this, these, these 19 or 20 billion dollars you've spent this last time around. We're going to take two billion of that and pay people, let them keep their money in their pockets for the next two years based on that. And then that repeats itself over and over and over. Uh, Devil's advocate on that because I've lived in states too where, okay, you may not have a sales tax or you may not have a property tax. Um, but they, granted, tend to be, uh, um, bluer states, but there's a fee for everything. And I know with the sales tax, the mechanism right now is you have to go to the people for increasing sales tax, levying those sales taxes. But the fee side of stuff, which call it a fee if you want, it's still a tax. Oh yeah. So what's to prevent that side of it getting out of control? Well, so that, yeah, this measure is not a magic bullet. It doesn't make our elected officials suddenly better. <laughs> I wish it did. But they still have the or ability to... be accountable. Exactly. And, and they still have the ability to raise those fees and taxes. But what's better is that those types, as you know, of fees and taxes have much more transparency and accessibility to the average citizen. You can hear, you know, it's brought up at the city or county commission meeting. Public input is required. Uh, there's a, a very attainable threshold to push it to a vote. Um, that, that's entirely different than property taxes. Nobody has any control effectively over the valuation portion. You know, the city and county commissions can say, well, we didn't raise your taxes, and yet your property taxes are skyrocketing East based Coast, on it, valuation. It, eastern part of the state, famous for that. Hey, we kept your your property taxes. We didn't raise your mill levies, but your valuation went through the roof. Right. It, it, and that's a game that has been played for a long time, mostly on the eastern part of the state, but it's starting to get here. Yep. And that's the reform part of this measure is we're getting away from, not getting away, we're just stopping, prohibiting the valuation part where people have no say, that part where people possibly are going to be forced to move out of their homes because they can't afford the increased valuation cost of property taxes. A lot to digest, and we're going to play a little devil's advocate coming up uh, when we come back from the break. We're talking with Dr. Rick Becker, uh, former state legislator, uh, concerning the property tax initiated measure, the initiated measure to get rid of property tax. We'll find out where that's at in the signature process right now as well, and uh, if and when that's going to be hitting the ballot for residents and taxpayers in North Dakota to vote on. This is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Talk of the Town. Bakken. Weekday morning starting at 9 on Super Talk 1270 and the free Super Talk 1270 mobile app. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bach, along with Dr. Rick Becker, former state legislature for North Dakota and uh, the face of the property tax initiated measure, the initiated measure to get rid of property taxes here in North Dakota. And it come, again, as this is done for a long time, comes down to relief versus reform and, and uh, people not being happy with what the legislature has promised when it comes to uh, reining in property taxes in North Dakota. All right, I want to play devil's advocate a little bit because I want to talk about the financing side. Property sure. taxes fund a lot of different things. Where does the money come from if property taxes go away? Because there's still services out there, roads and, and police and law enforcement and fire yep. and need to be addressed. It has to be part of the conversation. There's some things that you just have to fund uh, for public safety. And for me, it's the responsibility only of public safety things to fund. So government gets a little off the rails on that. But um, where does the money come from if there's no property taxes? Because there's a lot of things that property taxes cover right now. Right. And that's a, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked because it's, it's critically important that people understand that none of the things that property taxes currently pay for go away. Because they're currently paid for with property taxes doesn't mean that that's something special can only be paid by property. It can be paid by any revenue source. So 
when we have the state replaced, because the state has billions of extra dollars that they waste every single year, and we can go, I'd be happy to go through that with you as well. You mean growing the DHS budget by a lot and and giving a ton of money to give away to Mr. Wonderful through commerce is is not wasting money? Two million dollars to give away to a company. That's wasting money? Right. To to try and recreate (laughs) woolly mammoths, $125 million for a private fertilizer plant, $19 million to develop farmerless tractors. Um, but anyway, we've got a situation then where the state has so much money uh, and you, North Dakota is unique in that sense. We have so much extra money. Uh, we can quote Governor Burgum and he literally said we have billions and billions of cash laying around. So we have the money. The state will replace and refill that pot of money that currently is being filled by property te- property owners paying their property tax bill. So the cities and counties are held harmless. I mean, they, they retain the full amount that they've been getting. They, they continue to get that money. So they're not short money. So there's no reason to cut services. There's no need to cut services. They're held whole. So they, com- they completely fill that pot up to the 2025 levels with the state excesses. Keep in mind the state had three billion dollars of leftover money at the end of this last biennium, about one and a half, if I remember correctly, the biennium before that. We're currently on pace for about a billion dollars left over this biennium. Now I that mean, that's scary though when you put it in perspective, because if you take a look back five years, ten years, twenty years, look at the growth of government and, and all the money that's eaten up. So when you're talking about these excesses, all you have to do is rein in the growth of government a little bit, and now you've got much larger surpluses because it, it's kind of coming to fruition. Well, if we got this money to spend, we got to figure out a way to spend it. So, well, let's grow government. And, and I'm not a fan of growing government, but look at the growth in government that's taken place. Exactly. So there is money out there. You just have to rein in your growth. Oh, yeah. There's a tremendous amount of money out there. So, and, and yes, so the state has excesses because of how fortunate we are with oil revenues and so forth. And that people say, well, what if that goes away? Well, it, okay. It, devil's advocate again, because I was going to bring yeah. that up is, you know, the sky is falling and it's going to go away. This isn't a long term. You know, at some point it's going to dry up and those revenue streams are going to stop. What do you say to that? Well, right now, then what? As as we as we stand right now, the the legislature is spending every single penny they can, and so if oil goes away, we are still in trouble. We're still going to scramble trying to figure out. Okay, what do we cut? What do we do this? What do we do that? Um, the scenario of oil going away is something that will will not happen for several years. We know that that we're going to continue pumping oil for many years. Now, at least. 15. I mean, but really, truly, we're talking more like 30, 40, 50. Harold Hamm says it's going to be more like 50. They're investing money like crazy because they know the oil is going to continue. But yes, let's, so let's, let's play that game. Oil goes away sometime. I don't, we can say 25 years and just pick kind of an early, an early number. Now keep in the back of your mind, everyone, that according to the federal government and the current administration there, oil's going to be gone much quicker before that. Well, right. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's yeah, what they say. Put that in with the rest of the lies. But the, uh, so if oil goes away in 25 years and this doesn't pass, what happens is North Dakota then has, hasn't done anything to protect itself. So oil goes away in 25 years. We're just kind of stuck. We go back to the North Dakota of the 80s and 90s where where we talked about out migration and young people moving away and nothing happening in North Dakota. And do we join South Dakota to become Buffalo Commons? But when this passes, we become the only state in the nation with no property tax. We become a place that uh, has incredibly incentivized young families to move to North Dakota that has that has become the place to go for businesses when they're looking to relocate for a better tax environment when so this is well the that's answer. part of the argument right now is with South Dakota on the business side of stuff South Dakota doesn't have income tax exactly right and so that's kind of the argument about oh well they don't have income tax, so you see a lot of businesses that are located there because they're not paying tax right. on their income. Montana has no sales tax. South right. Dakota has no income tax. And North Dakota, ba- what do based we have? on per capita, is one of the richest states in the nation. And what do we have? What, what have we done? We, we talk, oh, North Dakota legendary. Come on, man. We haven't done anything legendary, and we've had the opportunity. We've we squandered have. it. Well, and, and take a look at the, the legacy fund. And now the governor's figured out how to tap into that. So when you start talking about excesses, 
And now they're spending beyond what we have because they're spending into the legacy fund, which is supposed to be for a rainy day. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, but going, but so to, yes, we've got a lot of money. Right. To put a to put a, um, a a cap on the on the oil, if oil goes away discussion, the state has been trying is striving for and doing all their government schemes to try and get two things: workforce development, economic diversification. And and typically, like all governments do, they fail at this. They waste a lot of taxpayer dollars. The best way to get those two things is to create the the best tax and regulatory environment you can. When we get rid of property tax, we get the economic diversification that we've been striving for. That insulates us because now we have new industry. This Our economy can chug along without relying on oil. So when oil goes away in 20 or 30 or 50 years, we're insulated. If we don't do this, we're screwed. So so when people say, well, the concern is oil could go away, yes, that's another reason to do this. Yeah, plan for it not always being there because if it is there, gravy. <laughs> if it's not, well, we got a contingency plan for yep. it. Uh, this is Talk of the Town on Super Doc 1270. We're talking with Rick Becker. We're finding out where uh, things are at right now as far as the, the signature campaign for the initiated measure to get rid of property taxes here in North Dakota. And uh, what he's hearing out there from uh, pros and cons, because, of course, there's some pushback uh, as well. And some concerns, some media raised concerns, some agenda raised concerns. We'll dig into that as well. This is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 12. Super Tandy. It's time. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bach along with Rick Becker, uh, former North Dakota legislator and uh, physician by trade. Uh, he is working on the property tax initiated measure to get rid of property taxes here in North Dakota. So, Rick, where are things at uh, timeline wise uh, as far as the gathering of signatures? And, and then I want to get into some of the pushback you're hearing as well. So we'll do that probably after the top of the hour if I can hold you over. But uh, where are we at on the timeline as far as this getting to the ballot? Yep. So we're halfway through the time frame that we have to get signatures. We have to have our signatures in by, uh, I think it's June 26th or 29th. And um, so so we're halfway there and we are also about halfway there with the number of signatures. Uh, we need 31,164 signatures, good signatures. Uh, Secretary of State uh, will throw out the ones that they think are problematic or that they maybe can't read, um, <clears throat> you know, any number of reasons. So we have to assume, because, of course, this is not something that the establishment is in favor of. Uh, establishment loves the money to spend on pet projects and pick their winners and losers. So they'll throw out a lot of signatures, and so we are aiming for more in that forty to 45,000 uh, range of signatures. So we're about t- halfway, typically yeah. on an initiated measure such as this, are you looking at uh, 10, 15, 20 percent over for spoilage on yeah, those signatures? Exactly, exactly. And, and um, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're actually at that, at that 45, we're, we're about almost 50 percent excess and so at the minimum we'd want to have say 25 percent excess but again there's there's a gray area there's some subjectivity so if this was something that the establishment was in favor of i'd worry a lot less and i think you know 10 or 20 percent overage would be enough what about the uh, percentage of people that remember 2012 and the promises that were made and not kept and uh just flat out want to make a statement yeah. Well, Everybody in North Dakota should sign it then, right? You know what's so interesting, Steve, is the opposition, the establishment lobbyist kind of, um, you know, cabal, they are really testing things out and they're very worried. They they have been using the loss of local control argument that they used in 2012. Okay, I, I, I'm going to throw that back. And you and I, back when you were a legislator, the local control argument, because for some reason... The legislature likes to tout local control, local control, local control, but they don't always give local control unless it's something they don't want to deal with. And then, well, local control, that's when it seems to pop up the most is, well, we don't want to deal with that because it's kind of messy. It's a little muddy. Uh, Local control. We're seeing that right now with this carbon sequestration summit carbon solutions proposed CO2 pipeline. Oh, wait a minute. Local control, we don't want local control right now because Burley County, Emmons County, and I forget the county over to Richland County, I believe, um, they've flexed their local control. 
Yep. And now those in favor of the Summit Carbon Solutions and the, the sequestering uh, route that the governor wants to pursue, they're not in favor of local control. Right. They have their principles until it doesn't suit them. And so local control is a principle until they aren't interested in local control. Private it's property rights point. are private property rights are a, a principle until they eight, don't care anymore and they want to they want to yeah. Eight bills yes. last legislative session that which would have bolstered property rights in North yeah. Dakota, private property rights, all killed last minute at the behest of the governor's office. Some of those, they were a slam dunk. Right. And then the governor's office killed them. Yep. And private you have property to rights are, are awesome, except when you want to do what the governor wants and and help the uh, help private players make a ton of money with this CO two uh, pipeline So the local garbage. control thing, I, I and and it, it's a great talking point. We hear it a lot, but you have to question the extent that we have local control in North Dakota because right. it, it seems more like it's a convenience when it's convenient for who. Yep. It, and, and that's my but, problem with that. But that and that's a, that it's a very interesting topic. But this measure doesn't doesn't take away any local control. So no. whether whether they're in favor or not, blah, blah, blah. The point is that the argument falls flat because the way this is written, we lose no local control. Locals are completely 100 percent in charge of their budget. Bismarck has 100 percent zero say in it. They they're they can't control anything. And the locals can have the budget increases uh, for by better, Bismarck. For you mean the capital, by the way. I'm it's, sorry. It's, yeah, yeah, I meant in the state. When, if government. you're not from Bismarck, <laughs> uh, what I hear is I don't want Bismarck to have local control. What they mean is the legislature and the governor. That's what they mean. So, yeah. Um, and so the opposition then is pivoting and they're looking for different messaging. And and they will not debate. They will not come on any program with me to talk about the pros and cons because they know that their argument is a losing argument. And that all they're relying on is an uninformed voter which is really really sad so now they're trying out things that make that really didn't make no sense at all like oh we might lose our oil revenue it's it's ridiculous so they're scrambling looking for something that they can scare the voters into voting against this measure once again against their own interest because of fear when we come back from the break i want to hold you over the top of the hour and i want to hear what you're hearing uh, when you're out promoting this, what you're hearing back and some of the, the marketing campaign that is against this and uh, wants to retain property taxes without the reform, without the relief. This is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270 on a finally Friday. I'm Steve Bach along with Rick Becker on Super Talk 1270. KLXX AM, Mandan Bismarck. A Town Square media station broadcasting from the View Community Credit Union Studio. Take us wherever you go. Download the free Super Talk 1270 app in the App Store or Google Play today. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Big Boy. Just get in line, it moves fast. Dakota Pharmacy and Dakota Natural Health Center. We're here to help you stay well. Trademark Realty, Peak Automotive and Service, and Silver Ranch. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bakken along with Rick Becker, a former legislator for the state of North Dakota, and Dr. Rick Becker. Uh, he is the face of the property tax initiated measure to get rid of property taxes in North Dakota. Uh, Rick, I wanted to ask you a little bit, what, what are you hearing from the pushback side? Because there's two sides to every argument, and uh, we know it's pretty simple. Get rid of property taxes in North Dakota, and uh, there's those that are behind this measure that think it puts North Dakota in a better position economically in the long run and for the future of the state. Um, devil's advocate side, of course, the state and the legislature not in favor of anything to reduce their revenue stream. Uh, so what are you hearing push back? Because there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of different information being disseminated out there. And we're going to hear more and more of that as the marketing campaign against getting rid of property taxes ramp up. Right. What are we hearing out there right now? So the what I'm hearing, they're still pushing the loss of local control, trying to get people uh, uh, to be afraid, saying that you won't be able to hire teachers, you won't be able to pay policemen, you won't be able to uh, buy a new fire engine. These are all blatant lies, completely untrue. But what they're relying on is that people will hear that and not 
do any further research, not look into it further and just be satisfied with them telling their lies of fear. Um, but those, those, it's very easy to argue against those. So what I'm finding is they're now switching to try and get people afraid to try and get people to be envious. So they're switching to a whole thing of saying, Hey, um, Fargo's going to get a better deal out of this than say, you know, wherever I Driscoll, um, or, and, and Mandan is saying, well, this isn't going to be as good for us as other places. And Bismarck saying it's not going to be as good for us as other places. Fargo is saying it's not going to be. And so, but these are what these are people that are not citizens. You know, if you're getting if you're keeping three thousand dollars in your pocket this year and next year and the next year and the next year and the next year, that's what you get. Does Fargo get a slightly better deal? I don't know. I mean, it's not going to be 100 percent fair, but they're trying to get people to say, well, I'm going to vote against me keeping three thousand dollars a year forever because someone told me Fargo is getting a better deal than my town. Well, it's like it's Western crazy. North Dakota where, you know, I remember during royalty discussions and I always told landowners like it's about the royalty. It's not about the lease payment because I know people that wouldn't sign leases because my neighbor was going to get a nickel more per acre. Yeah. Well, give Is it that, away for a dollar. Right. I want the royalty, but I want guarantees you're going to drill in six months. Yep. It's about the royalty. It's like there's this mentality in North Dakota we have about foregoing dollars for dimes. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of that mentality that plays into that. It is. Um, they also talk about, well, you know, big business is going to get a big tax break. Um, and so they they want people to, to uh, forego doing the, the best tax relief they'll ever have in their entire lifetime because of not wanting business to get a tax break. Well, I hate to inform people, but the only people getting great tax breaks with property tax right now is big business. They're getting five, 10, 20 year exemptions on their property tax. So they're getting the break. It's you, the people that are not getting the break. So that's a, a, a foolish statement, but that's what they're trying to do. I'll, I'll take Bismarck, for example, because having been the mayor and current chair of the Burley County Commission, it, and I've got a friend of mine, and I, I wrote this down the wall. I might even get this as a tattoo. Bismarck does not have a property tax problem. Bismarck has a property exemption problem. It's 100% right. And you can lay that across the state. I I made the contention all the time. Bismarck starts in a hole. We're not on a level playing field when you start talking about um, the state financing municipalities because of all the exemptions with state government buildings. Mm -hmm. Bismarck's in a hole. We're not playing on a level playing field. That's an issue. This levels the playing field. Yeah, it absolutely does. Fargo, Fargo can say this doesn't help them as much because they have a bigger, uh, they rely more on sales taxes, which this doesn't help. Bismarck, it, uh, rightfully, like you said, has so much property that's exempted that they can say, well, we're not getting our, our adequate share. And Mandan is, the mayor is claiming that their, their special assessments, uh, they rely more on that than most other cities. Well, and so and then, what I hear all the time is Bismarck has way more sales tax than we do have to play. Well, well yes, fine. But yeah. those are business decisions and, and you every, need to make business decisions. Every, every town leader is going to try and tell you that they're not getting the fair shake. And it's impossible for everyone to, to be worse off. And so that's why I say you have to go back to the individual. The individual is keeping in their pocket every single dime that they are currently paying in property tax. And this helps renters as well because renters, you pay property tax. You may not pay it directly, but that's how, that's how your rent is determined. It's the number one expense for landlords. And so your, your, your rent may go down, but the biggest, most likely thing is it's not going to keep going up like it has been. It's going to stay steady because there's no incentive there's no there's no pressure to increase the rent and if someone does increase their rent and the the guy or gal who owns an apartment building across the street doesn't the, you know what's going to happen is the tenants go over there so there's going to be a tremendous pressure for no more rent increases this helps everybody if you if you keep it on an individual level this helps everybody and let the mayors and and uh, the the elected officials squabble about did this town or that county get a slightly better or worse deal Equitable for everybody. That's kind of the intent of, of this when it comes to getting rid of property taxes. And for me, it comes back to, you know, a community like Bismarck, there's a lot of exempted property. That levels that playing field is what that does, uh, at least in my mind. So, uh, Rick, love to talk to you more about this. Uh, if people want more information, uh, you guys have a website? Yes, go to endpropertytax.com. Very easy. 
endpropertytax.com. There's a lot of information there. There's a, there's several videos and there is a way to donate. We need contributions to get this thing running. If, uh, if we're going to accomplish this, the best thing to happen to North Dakota in its entire existence, uh, we do need donations. So please take part, get active, make donations, go to endpropertytax.com. Endpropertytax.com. Uh, Rick, uh, looking forward to uh, our further discussions. Thank you. It was fun. Uh, this is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 12.7. And we come back, uh, runnings. Brad Ock coming up next on Super Talk 12.7. Super Talk. D. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Super Doc 1270, I'm Steve Bakken, and uh, joining us in the program, of course, Brad Ock, General Manager at Running South in Bismarck, uh, just off of South Washington. I know with Christmas and New Year's and the schedule's all kind of screwed up a little bit, but uh, hey, it's still a good time for beef jerky and different meat products, and uh, yeah, what'd you bring in today, Brad? So we got a couple things. We got Badlands. Again, we brought in a Badlands earlier. Oh. And this is the Pride of Dakota Badlands jerky. Uh, but this one's their Prairie Which Heat. Which one? Yeah, Prairie Heat. Yeah, so I know we've stayed away from spicy. And I have never yeah, had this one, so fine. I don't know what it is. Like, I'm a sweet and tangy guy, yeah. but uh, spicy, I'm, I'm, all right, come on. I know. Fork we're it gonna, over. We're going to get it, see what this one's like. I packed some extra water for me just in case. Okay, and, uh, and of course, me, you brought in a uh, Sprecher Fire Brood. Root beer, which I like the 1919 you carry, but the Sprecher, uh, one of the things with the Sprecher on the root beer, honey, made with honey. And I'm a huge honey guy. Mm. So, this isn't bad. Prairie heat. It's not actually. No, it's just a more a little peppery though. But it's, it's still a little, little tangy sweet. It does build a little mm-hmm. bit actually. It does. But yeah, I think it's mostly pepper. Well, okay, so. One of the things with the jerky, if you can't tell I'm enjoying it, but one of the things with the jerky is I like to suck on jerky a little bit. Steak bites, we had the steak bites before. Mm-hmm. I like to blow through the steak bites. They're just so darn good. But the jerky, you kind of got to work it a little bit, get that little chew going. And, and as you, you do tuck that, it away. a little pinch between your cheek and gum. I agree. And the cool thing with the jerky, though, is you're right. The heat does build with the bad land. But this brand. isn't bad, though. No, it's... Mm. The next one, Mm-mm. so there's two heat jerkies from Badlands, <laughs> and the next one's called Rattler's Revenge. You brought that in. That's the stuff that's like, okay, find the pieces a little bit more red in there. So that was a different those got one. The bite. Yeah, the Rattler's Revenge has chili. The chili like flakes. Little chili flakes in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll have to mm. do that one. Oh. Might have to bring in a root beer and a cream soda. That well, I brought day. in a ginger ale. It's from Dream... Dream Lodge Golden Ginger Ale from Cripple Creek Brewing. See, uh, now I like to mix my ginger ales with bourbon, and you didn't bring any of that in this morning. No bourbon, because so I got to I got to go back, go to, back work. to work. Yeah, I don't. I don't get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and then the other it's still the holiday season, right? We can get away with that. You can. <laughs> I can get away with that. My HR would not appreciate. Well, I'm my HR, but still, yeah. My HR, HR, Bubby would the not. The HR's that. HR, yeah, probably they would frown not. on that a little bit. I think my associates would frown on that too, because really? they would feel left out. Well, like, okay, yeah. yeah, you got a good crew. Kev would we for do. sure. Yes, he would. Yeah, he's, he's like he, boss. This he, is not. He, this is a, not okay. Yeah, he appreciates a yeah. good bourbon. And then the other thing we're excited, <laughs> uh, we started carrying those tangy snack sticks, the snackers from yeah. Cloverdale. And so when Cloverdale came out with those, it's like they first, it's like, okay, you can get the little sampler packs so of just a couple. Now they're, mm-hmm. now it's a six pack. Yeah. Now it's a six pack. And actually, uh, that's awfully good in the boat. It's hunting. so good. Mm-hmm. Not to mention that, but, uh, I mean, I would venture to say, I think like five of us. And the um, way you just shredded that bag open means that we're going to finish that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I think during some of that ice stuff, most of us ate this for lunch. Oh, yeah. Because none of us wanted to leave the store. Right. So it was one of those, well, we have these snackers up front. Well, and we got the little um, sausage, uh, the summer sausage stick, too. Like the little, probably like six or eight inch one. Mm-hmm. We cut that up, took some crackers off the shelf. 
you know, that was a nice thing, too, is we got what we need at the store during some of those ice events Grab to take care of and make a little summer sausage sandwich. Throw it in back, and we had crackers, cheese, and summer sausage. Well, and with the ice event that we had, uh, you know, how much ice melt did you guys go through? Because I can imagine you couldn't leave the store because, no. A, it was icy, and B, you had to keep restocking the pallets of ice right. melt that you were going through. It kind of like... It brought out the inner kid in some of us because we had the ice melt wrapped in, in shrink wrap outside. Did you go figure skating in the parking lot? We did not. Because I saw a lot of people figure skating on city streets. We saw some stuff. My wife even told me, like, you should bring your ice skates in. So I debated I going out in the that fence. video. Yeah. Wrapped up, doing a load out in the fence and ice skates. Probably <laughs> cheaper or probably more safe than wearing my normal shoes anyways. Yeah, but one thing you guys have is the the ice cleats. Yep. The the little stretch over the boot Absolutely. with the little ice spikes so, and the cleats. You got a couple different brands of that. Yeah. So the ice, uh, that made us, we bought all this PPE stuff, right? Safety, top of mind everywhere right now. Safety in the last two years has really caught on what increases worker safety. So, oh, these tangy they're so snackers. Oh, so we Dale. got winter gloves go and high vis stuff and all these, all these things we're buying for PPE for our warehouse and loadout guys. And it wasn't until the ice, the day after Christmas, we're like, you know what we don't have? We don't have ice cleats for those guys back there. Well, you got to get them some. You got them in so the store. So we did, yeah. So we store used some. We got all sorts of ice cleats in back for the guys now. So they're using those. And it was big. Ice melt and ice cleats. I think we did seven or eight pallets of ice melt. On now, I go month. through a couple different types of ice cleats, and so does Wendy, my wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, Because we walk our dogs all the time, which, by the way, trying to walk the dogs in the ice was... <laughs> <laughs> okay, dogs come with four wheel drive. It didn't work. It's like, well, we got the puppies and try to watch the puppies. Yep, try to stand up just well, to go. Little legs. Yeah, yeah, it just didn't work well. But um, so when I'm snow blowing, I've got one set of you know like the little coils that like the yak tracks. That's what our guys in the yeah. warehouse like. It, though, now, if you're just walking around on regular sidewalks because like patchy ice, mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of those. But if you're just hardcore, what we've had this past uh, week with the ice event, um, those things just phenomenal. And then you've got the little spike ones, too, which if you're walking on patchy ice, because if you're navigating on dry cement mm-hmm. and icy cement and you're this is body stuff, I love those. So actually, I've got one pair of, of all right, these are my hardcore, uh, I'm snow blowing boots, yep. and I've got those with the coils. On those, and then I've got the ones where okay, I got to walk the dogs, and it's a little icy out, and I got the little spikes. So Wendy yep. has those on her dog walking shoes. I busted out the yak tracks and the the, the, the hardcore. I'm snow blowing yeah. boots for the ice because and then, that was the only way I could walk around on the ice, and and I felt bad. But I'm like, how can I fit these on the dogs? <laughs> I, I tried to figure it out. There was no way. No, uh, yeah, no ice cleats for dogs. Yeah, but then they have the next enough. step up. They got the ones now that probably have. I'd say about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. And I would the, expect, the metal cleat. The metal uh, cleat yeah. that's actually going to dig in. I mean, it's spike. definitely like ice fishing. Well, those probably are for like out. mountain climbing guys. Right, guys you're going are, out ice fishing and you want something that's just going to dig in and go. And Or if you're climbing any of the icy mountains mm-hmm. that we have here in North Dakota, then th- those are good for those. You know, we just had a conference call this week, too, about some ice melt. Those are hard to find, by the way. Um, the good ones with the yeah. heart. You don't find those everywhere. Runnings has them. Mm-hmm. And we have, and they don't fool around. Those are the Mac Daddy of the snow cleats, yep. the ice cleats, right? And we just started looking at. We just initiated this past week some markdowns in ice fishing. Be, I mean, there's not a lot of ice out there, no. right? The competition's marking down. The buyer went out. We had a conference call this week. He's like, hey, look, people are taking markdowns. Hey, if you want to go ice fishing in my driveway, you perfectly could after <laughs> this past week, <laughs> right? So you go now. We got ice cleats, ice fishing, ice melt. It's kind of going to be, you know, we got it all. You know what? I, what I actually could have used because I know a couple people that have these. So, and, and I didn't go to running and look, but the military grade flamethrowers, which really melt your driveway quick. But in lieu of that, uh, the propane uh, torch, the torch kit. We got those. You got the torch mm-hmm. kit. Weed burning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Weed burning. Great. 
Also really good for de-icing a driveway or a sidewalk in a hurry. We wouldn't condone it, but it would but it probably works. work. I have mm-hmm. friends that have done that and used that. Runnings has those, those yep, torch kits. We do. We have the torch kits for weed burning, and we also have... Or the, ice removal. We yeah, also okay, have like my... the flamethrower one, too. You got the flamethrower We got one? one of those left in the store. We got a couple really? of them. We sell one every now and then, also for weed control, just a li- little bit more fun to use. Also could be used for ice removal. Yeah. Yeah. Or weed control. Whatever you... (laughs) You just got to get creative. And you know what? You can get creative at runnings. There's a lot of cool stuff at runnings you can get creative. We love to listen to creative ideas. Well, and you'll actually help brainstorm, right? Absolutely. We don't condone or support. Or in, if encourage. something might be a little used in a different capacity yes. than what it was designed we love for, love to hear the stories. But there's options. I'm just that's yeah. all. I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. There's <laughs> options. Uh, <laughs> stop by Runnings uh, uh, South Bismarck, uh, right off of South Washington. Uh, what is it? Seven hundred South Washington. Seven hundred one. Seven hundred one South, South okay, Washington. The other side yep. of the street, but seven hundred one South Washington. Brad Ock. Uh, we're going to get to the flyer because uh, with the New Year's flyer, uh, a lot of really cool stuff in there. Some winter stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff in the clothing side of stuff. Um, one of the things I, I ran into this week was having to plug my vehicle in uh, because I wanted the windows to because i've got it kind of wired up yeah extension cords we'll talk about that uh some cool stuff uh in the flyer uh coming up for the new year this is talk of the town on super talk 12 step without apology the regular joe show with joe giganti weekday evenings at nine on super talk 1270 and the free super talk 1270 mobile app Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Super Talk 1270, you're tuned to Talk of the Town. I'm Steve Bakken along with Brad Ock from Runnings, General Manager, 701 South Washington and South Bismarck. Of course, uh, the sale prices, all of the running stores around the regions, and there are a ton of them. Uh, your local little farm and ranch and clothing and food and and Cloverdale, um, <laughs> Badland, <laughs> the jerky. Uh, I, I've got a Sprecher Fire Brewed uh, root beer. Of course, your Candyland is uh, that little candy cove. Oh, yeah, and that's a Bismarck. All the throwback stuff. It's a Bismarck exclusive. Well, you and I were talking during the break about um, the the old jerky snuff. Right. Well, when you were saying you like to chew the jerky yeah, up and put it into your my, lips, yeah. I do the same thing. It's because of that. Old yeah, can of the old can of you guys get that in. We get it in, too. and we, it sells out so fast. You know, we have a a guy who comes in who will see it, and he'll just grab all six of them. He's like, "Oh yeah, I got it." <laughs> and you know, it's just and then we have a couple associates who see it and they jump on it right away and they love it. But yeah, oh, Candyland, man! It's, oh, good stuff. It's year round. You don't need Christmas. For yeah, candy that land. that does go well. The, yeah. We talked a little bit about the baking stuff too, and some of the old candies that you use for uh, some of your Christmas cookies and baking mm-hmm. and stuff. And Runnings always has those, the nuts and everything. But um, you know, now that we're past Christmas, it, it, a lot of sales going it's on. It's time right to get now. rid of Christmas. Yeah, cr- yeah. Christmas is Chris- over. Christmas candy and decor is fifty percent off. Wow. Uh, you know, so they did an interesting thing with toys this year. Uh, and I tell you what, it's taking some time to adjust to it. They, we carry toys year round, a small right. selection of toys. Well, well, the you know the farm and ranch yeah. and you know a lot the, of the, different... the old toys sale was tied to the ad that ended on Christmas Eve. So we opened up the day after Christmas, and none of the toys were on sale. Like what? The what? Heck, what happened? Like oh no, the two were tied together, so they dropped oh. this this price change. So they clearanced all the toys we're not going forward with. So all those got clearanced. We're like oh, but what about all these other toys? Like you can't just not run toys on sale. So now we have clearance toys. The rest of the toys are twenty five percent off. All of Christmas. so basically yeah. all the toys are on sale. At basically Reddit. all the toys are on sale, and they should all be marked by now. I, you know what? You, but all the toys. And if it's not, hey, Brad, you said they were on sale on Talk of the Town. Well, they like, are now. Well, they are now. <laughs> Let's go do 25% off. You know? So, and then, of course, it's January's clearance time. So, this is, you know, we do some markdowns and clothing. 
tons of markdowns in clothing. I mean, I bet, I mean, those poor ladies on Tuesday got 10, 14 pages of markdowns over there in clothing that they had to go find. And it's just, you know, there's a lot of good prices on jeans. It's just trying to, you know, this is the time we start that transition. Heck, Spring Carhartt is shipping. What? The first beginning of January. We'll be shipping Spring Carhartt. We'll start coming in the first week in January. So we're done with shipping. winter. I like that idea. Yeah. I, I, no more snow, no more. Well, there'll good. be hoodies. There should be some. Because, you know, we, North, we like our hoodies. Hoodies are year-round, Yeah, that's though. a year-round deal. But we're talking, yeah, we're, we're getting it's 95 out of degrees in, you know, at, at night on the river. You still need a hoodie in August and Correct. July. Yeah, absolutely. And so some of that stuff shipping uh, already here in January for our spring assortment. You know, darn retail. We're always a whole season ahead. <laughs> uh, so a lot of clearance stuff. You talked about some of the ice fishing stuff being mm-hmm. knocked down as well. But yep. uh, um, the clothing side of things, a lot of different clearance things. A lot of those items out there right now, because we haven't really gotten into the ice fishing season yet, you've got all these ice fishing clothing that is on sale. Yep. So, you know, you got a lot of that, and that's all back in sporting goods. You'll see all the ice houses set up. We haven't even wrapped up. up hunting seasons yet. Uh, no, know. and then the back wall is just loaded with, with some cold weather bibs and coats for ice fishing. And, and we got that stuff, too. If you don't necessarily want that specific, there's Burn and Carhartt and Arctic. We got some of those other brands over in in the clothing department, too, that you can take out on the ice with you. You know, one of the uh, big uh, things for ice fishing, too, that you, you got to have good footwear. Yes. Um, whether you're farming, ranching, uh, you're sitting in a tractor, you're sitting in a snow plow, you're sitting in a work truck. Um, it doesn't matter if you're out in the field, if you're sitting on the ice, you got to have good footwear. Yeah, Muds and Mucks, we got them both. Uh, Muds is a mid-states brand. Mucks, you all, you all, you all know some of that too. It is you've got to come and look and find something that's warm. I mean, some of these. Some of these slip-on boots are rated to 60 to 80 below. And not only that, yeah, but we also 1600 have... 1,600 gram, yeah, 800 and, and gram. some of the... We have a construction grade or... I mean, we have stuff that's good to like 80 to 100 below. I mean, we can get stuff ordered. If, if, if you came up from down south and this 20 below is hurting you, well... We'll get you taken care of for sure. But we have all... We haven't had 20 below yet, and I hope we don't. Yeah, right. Agreed. But there's just the assortments there. Well, Um, and that's the other thing, too, is so a lot of people do work outside, outdoors, all year round, Um, especially I'm I'm thinking the oil patch folks, too, Mm -hmm. that, you know, the FR lines, because you need the FR clothing out in the oil patch, and it was a little difficult finding all of those lines, finding all those lines warm enough. Yep. You've got them. Yep, and and if and if we don't have the size you want, like we've talked about multiple times, we have eighty stores to reach out to to get product shipped our direction. You know, uh, you look at what's happening in the Northeast and what's happening in the Midwest. If we have varying degrees of cold, it's easy for us. To like, you know what? They need this. We can pack it up, ship it out, and take care of the stores that need the product and get it shipped out there for them. Yeah, day or two, boom, it's there. Yep. Um, you know, this flyer with the the lot of different clearance stuff. You talked about some of the clothing. Um, layering is always a, a big thing if you're going to be out in the outdoors and out in the cold. Um, you've got all the layers, so all different components of layering systems. Right, and you look at with within each brand, Cinch, Ariat, Carhartt, Burn, they all have their own. Uh, Columbia has a little bit of layering. You have all sorts of options when it comes to your basic T-shirts, long-sleeve T-shirts, hoodies, coats, coats of all degrees. Spring Flannels, clothes. vests. I'm a big yeah. vest guy this time of the year. You know? If you see me, it's like, and I try to explain this, no, I haven't gained a few pounds over Christmas. I'm wearing a vest under my jacket. <laughs> Maybe I should wear the vest on the outside yeah. of the jacket. Just like. <laughs> yeah, and, like, and from like a work tee standpoint, we have a brand CW that's five ninety nine different color tees. If you just want to achieve any like Hanes is, is set up right beside them too, a bunch of different Hanes shirts and CW and we, we just have. And of course the socks. You got to have yep. good socks, especially if you're talking footwear, you got to have good quality socks. Good socks, always a key in the winter. Uh, we're going to come back, Brad, and talk about uh, some of the uh, events that you help around the community. That's coming up next. We're talking to Brad Ock of Runnings. This is Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Super Talk. 
Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. You're tuned to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. I'm Steve Bangalore with Brad Ock, the general manager of Runnings 701 South Washington in South Bismarck. And Brad, one of the things you guys do is, is such a great job of being engaged in the community, whether it's a big fundraiser or a small fundraiser. Uh, now, with Capital City Christmas, of course, which I'm involved with, uh, by the way, our silent auction is up live at 32auctions.com. Just go to New Year's Eve Gala silent auction. Uh, that's 32auctions.com. But you guys, uh, the raffle part, big part, uh, $2,500 gift card from Runnings. Uh, but whether it's big or small, there's a lot of other ways that Runnings pitches in in the community. Thank you, Brad, for being part of, of Capital City Christmas and, and supplying that because we've got our New Year's Gala, New Year's Eve Gala coming up yep. this weekend. Uh, you'll be there. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of food, a lot of great entertainment. Uh, Rift is playing, uh, local band. It's it's a great night, uh, absolutely great night. You've been there. You yeah, we've been there it. the last couple of years. We love it. My, You know, my wife's parents come down. They watch the kids. We go out. Uh, it's a nice adult night. It, it is. And it ends with the fireworks. You know, I remember. Fireworks at midnight. There's something oh about fireworks gosh. in the winter that are just A couple just years incredible. ago, it was, I remember it was Memory fireworks, so fireworks for us. cold. And we had to watch them inside. Everyone was like huddled by the windows, but like it was a great view. Well, that's why you set it up that way because if it's really, really cold, yep. you can watch them from inside. I mean, last year was kind of cold, but we still stepped outside. Yeah. We put our coats on, stepped outside, watched them. Oh, it was amazing. This year, well, it's, it's fun for better. the community too because all the people that show up. I mean, all there the were cars, cars everywhere. everywhere. People that come for the fireworks at midnight. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it, known. Yeah, the the southwest parking lot of. The Bismarck Event Center. Yes. And the fireworks at midnight are absolutely phenomenal. Yep. The food's the food's good. Uh, the the silent auctions fun. The live auctions. You know. The, you know. It's always amazing. It's the auctioneer always has so much to offer on the live auctions, the entertainment, and keeping it lively. Because that's arguably one of the hardest parts of the events. All the events we go to. The hardest part to execute, I feel, is the live auction because you got to keep everyone engaged. You got to keep them excited. And I don't, you know, like, I don't think I've ever been bored. You know, it's one of those things where they talk and then they start poking fun and having a good time. And because at well, the end do of the day, well, we do a bunch of games and stuff too. Like at the end of the day, you're there to help interactive like, crowd yes, stuff. You're there to have a good time and raise money for a good cause. And but yes, the games. I do know our table's full. Uh, very excited. And well, we I know some, Kev is coming because you had him at Bourbon Pole. I had him at Bourbon Pole. He's yeah. like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. I'm there's in. a wine pole as yeah, well. There's and, a wine. Um, and we have we have a few different people joining us this year, and their spouses are excited. One goes like, oh man, he shows me a photo. He's like, oh my wife went shopping. I got dress pants and tie and shirts. Well, we got and the photo like, booth. Yes. So you got to look good, right? Oh yeah, I'm like, dude, it's gonna be a good time. <laughs> You're gonna have a good time. Well, thanks for participating. You know, not just runnings, but so many different businesses within the community that uh, really pitch in and help. Uh, we've got a. I think a little over 100 items on the silent auction, which, by the way, that, if you go to Capital City Christmas. I accidentally won, like, five things last year. Did you really accident on on the silent auction? That was an accident. You know, our silent auction this year is actually online. That's what Wendy was saying. It started this week. We've got the the silent auction online, so you don't have to be present to bid on some of those silent auction items. You just go to the Capital City Christmas website. Just Google Capital City Christmas. The link will be right up there, and and you can start bidding. So I'm going to compete all night long. That's and then you can sit at your table. You don't have to walk up to the the table to write down. Or you know how everybody gets that crush, that last. Mm-hmm. All right, thirty seconds. Boom, boom. Everybody's up there. And goes like, am I getting the thing? I, I yeah. You just sit your phone and be a little subtle about it and go. I'm sneaky. Wait for that last I second. It. Send. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good. that works. But you know, so many different businesses within the community help participate in this, and and you know. Runnings, of course, that twenty five hundred dollars gift card, uh, uh, one of the benchmark items on our our raffle ticket, which you bought. I bought a raffle ticket, so you're not drawing. I'm not drawing, so I don't buy a raffle ticket. So I draw every year, nice. so it's all fair. But I do sell most of the raffle tickets, so which means I sell most of the winners. You sell most of the winners. Yeah, I like I those odds. Yeah, it's well, and we don't. It's capped. We only sell 300 tickets. Right. And there's seven items on there, including a hot tub this year. 
I worked two years to get a hot tub. I'm on trying there. to think. Like, I don't think there's anything on the list that's not. That's like, oh, I don't think I yeah, use that. It's, it's cool. I'd use everything. Tires, hot tub, gift mm-hmm. card from running, shotgun. Is there uh, a Traeger on there this year? Yeah. Was there a grill on there this no, year? No, we did a we did a shotgun this year. Oh, okay. Instead of the the grill, and uh, yeah, just all kinds of good stuff on oh. there. So, hey, anybody need a raffle ticket? Just catch me at the station today, or if you're coming to the galley, you can get your tickets at Eventbrite or or go to the event center box office. Um, Few tickets left, not many, but a couple. You got to come out. It's a good time. It is. It's a good night out. We even let Brad wear one of his hats. It's <laughs> <laughs> he's got a hat for every occasion. It's kind of crazy, <sighs> um, you know. But again, running's participating in the community and, yes. and really coming back. If if somebody else, and, and this is a bigger ticket item, like I said, the twenty five hundred dollar gift card uh, from Runnings. Um, that's something you have to run up through corporate. It, yeah, that's it, a, a that is item. a one hundred percent corporate approved yeah. donation to support the arts in Bismarck. That is arts and humanities projects. You know, in obviously, it's me asking like, "Hey, this is something I'm passionate about. This is my background. This is I care deeply about our, our arts and our community." And you know, they want to support what you know, obviously, what the store managers are going to support. But if you have an event and you want to be, you want us to be part of it. Um, because there's basically big ticket items and smaller ticket items. Right. We we could do some gift cards. We can do some toys. We've done uh, gift baskets of old fashioned candy. We've done old fat like throwback board games. We did barbed wire for an event <laughs> for someone who's like, you know what, we're gonna do barbed wire, and like, sure as heck, like it did great. It was like. You made how much of them? <laughs> wow, I need that. Wow. You know, and it's just like we can cater to the event, come with an idea. And there are certain dollar amounts that have to go through corporate. And they only meet once a month, the corporate community. Corporate community committee. Whew. Wow, you got that it. Was, that was tough. Well, no, CCC, Capital yeah, City Capital Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. That's why, that's Corporate, probably why they did it. Yeah, they liked the Yeah, they liked the initials. And But, you know, they only meet once a month, and as a committee, they decide, like, these are the ones to support. Yes. Yeah. A lot of great ways to help out, Brad. Thanks for helping out in the community. Of course, just stop in and running and see Brad. Uh, also, if you want to check out... Uh, the New Year's Eve Gala Silent Auction Capital City Christmas. Uh, you can go to the Capital City Christmas website or you can go to 32auctions.com and check out New Year's Eve Gala. Uh, the auction is up live as well. So if you're not attending, don't forget fireworks at midnight. Uh, be sure to check out the fireworks at midnight. That's for the entire community. Uh, Southeast parking lot of the Bismarck Events Center on New Year's Eve at midnight. This has been Talk of the Town. Have a safe New Year's Eve. We'll see you next week on Super Talk 1270. LXX AM, Mandan Bismarck, a Townsquare media station, broadcasting from the View Community Credit Union Studio.